Welcome to North Dakota Hockey Central, your television home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert. On today's show, we'll hear from head coach Brad Barry on what his team focused on during a rare bye week before setting the scene for a top 10 showdown with the Denver Pioneers. We will also give you a front row seat at UND's annual outdoor practice. But first, it's time for this week's installment of UND Hockey's web series, Through These Doors. First step is you gotta get all the ingredients together. Alright, chai seeds, little old manor, fruit, some almond milk, and all little different uh, flavors to enhance that, uh, that recovery. I wouldn't say I'm a, a health guru, but you know, I'm a big sweet guy, but uh, <laughs> cold pool and I have a bet right now that I won't eat sweets for a month, so it's been kind of hard, but you know, we're battling, so. I always, and I always usually make Pinto one because he doesn't want to make them, so you gotta, you know, you gotta babysit the, the youth. Look at that. He'll, uh, what, what does he do? Actually, he doesn't do really do much for me, so. But anyways, you know, just being a nice guy and uh, making sure he gets his proper recovery in. Also, I'd say, uh, you know, it's a different aspect where uh, we mix flavors up and things like that. Sometimes he makes them, but mostly it's me, so. Because he's usually, uh, takes forever in the locker room. Here you go, bud. Here, take a, take a sip right now. How does it taste? How would you rate it? One out of ten. I'd give it like an 8.2. That's a good smoothie. <laughs> The bye week provided the guys a chance to have some fun and reset their minds. So that was just a lot of fun, you know, it was just a little bit of a breather, you know, it's, there's no, no real pressure, there's no high anxiety or, you know, high, high pace to the, to the day. It's just a nice, nice fun day just to kind of reminisce and, and remember back when you were a kid playing with, with some of your buddies and, you know, you're all grown up and you, and you get to do it again. So it's, it's a pretty big uh, privilege that we get to do and it was, it was well enjoyed for sure. I think just having that week off uh, really was big for us. You kind of hit the reset button for your mind and your body, and when that week's over, you kind of get excited to get to the rink again. It's that little last breather before the last push in the season. So I think the guys are just excited to play hockey, excited for what's going to come uh, in the next couple of weeks slash months, and uh, yeah, we're just really excited to keep it going. As the page turns to Denver, UND dials back in the marquee matchup. Denver and UND has been pretty good for the last few years and I think every time we play them it's just a tough game. Um, they got a lot of skill, speed and I think what makes it the most special is just the rivalry and uh, what, what's happened the last four or five, six years between us. Every game's a, a tough game. Like There's never any blowout wins one way or the other. Um, it's, it's very rare that you know you get games that are you know six to five or you know five four they're they're all, you know, one goal games, usually two to one or one nothing sometimes. So it, those are the games you want to play, and, that's, and I think that's what makes um, this series a, a good one. Senior leaders acknowledge the intensity of the storied rivalry. This is just a great, um, great chance to prove, you know, what we can do as a team. And I think, you know, they're going to be coming at us really hard. And, we gotta, we gotta be ready and match, match what they got. So you know, anything we can do to help improve and prepare ourselves, because you know, good week of practice, you just try to play good on the games and stuff. So it's just another good series to prepare us for, uh, you know, what's down the road. And uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta take each game, Friday and Saturday, one step at a time, and hopefully uh, try and uh, get a couple wins here. Whenever I hear that we're playing Denver, it's always uh, a top charted game. And I know that it's going to be a fun one because those are the ones that you remember 20 years down the road, um, grinding it out, 
Even uh, last time we played them, like Cold Cold Gold to uh, win us in overtime, that was something special that we're going to remember as a class and as teammates that, hey, we won that, uh, that last game to take the upper hand in that series. The team hopes playing fast and playing together lands them on the winning side again. Playing with a lot of pace, uh, we're playing together. Uh, we know what this is. We're, we're on the home stretch here. This is the run for the Penrose, and so it's very important to us. So we know we got to be dialed in right from the start, and uh, the game's starting practice. So we, we got to have every practice as sharp as we can and be and executing at a high level because if we can do it in practice, we can do it in the games, and this is, this is a big time of the year for us. Simply put, that they ended our season last year, and uh, like I said before, it's uh, kind of still a sour taste in our mouth. And um, using that as fuel throughout this whole summer when we were training as a team and uh, grinding out those tough days early on uh, has pushed us to be as good as we are now, and we're going to keep that uh, fire burning. I think coaches get to have fun just as much as the players. You know, they're they're doing what they love, and. You know, it can't be 100% all the time, you know, that be, wouldn't be any fun. So it's, it's good to have a little lighter side every once in a while and, you know, get guys riled up a little bit and have some fun with them. And, you know, we see that, you know, and we, we kind of read off to them and say, you know what, it's, you know, been working hard for a little bit. We can have a little bit of fun too, but at the same time, you got to know when, when to switch, when to, when to flip the switch, I think, because once game time rolls around, you know, it's 100% it's intensity all the time. So. Good stuff as always from Cassie Niles, Tyler Hasted, and the entire Through These Doors team. There is much more to come on North Dakota Hockey Central this week, including a conversation with Brad Berry on how the coaching staff attacks a week without games on the calendar. That's coming up next. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central, where we are now joined, per usual, by UND head coach Brad Berry from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, thanks for the time. Yeah, thanks, Alex. For the first time since the Christmas break, you didn't have a game to coach this past weekend. What's that feeling like for you during the season on a Friday or Saturday night when you're on a bye? Well, you know, obviously, uh, when you're not playing, it's kind of a different outlook or a different, I guess, mindset. Uh, leading into that week, uh, we still had a really good week of practice. Uh, you know, we wanted to make sure. Our, foot was still on the gas here, what we've done all season long here with our habits and our details. So we had a really good week of practice and then on the weekend, uh, you know, we gave our players a couple days off to recuperate, you know, physically and mentally and, uh, and us as coaches, we went on the road recruiting, all three of us here. So uh, we got some production, you know, to try to find the next wave of players coming into North Dakota, but yet still uh, had a really good week of practice and now it's game week and uh, uh, plan on having uh, four really good practices here before we uh, play Denver this weekend. There were five other NCHC teams in action this past weekend. Were you locked into those games? Were you more focused on the recruiting that you had mentioned? Or are you able to turn off hockey and reset a little bit? Yeah, we never turn hockey off. <laughs> um, you know, I think it's one of those things where, you know, we got what we had to out of the weekend here and, and, and it was a benefit for us. But we were all also cognizant of what's going on around, uh, you know, our league and around the nation as far as uh, standings and pairwise. Uh, you know, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you want to keep focused and and keep uh, in your mind on, on the things that we have to uh, attain here as far as our goals. And, uh, and again, now we have a chance to do that this weekend here, getting back into NCHC play. One of the highlights of the bye week is that annual outdoor practice. Remind us, when did that tradition start and why has it become such a staple for the program? Well, I, I can't tell you exactly when we first started it. All I know is, you know, it's been probably over 10 years ago that we, we did that. And, you know, the, the balance becomes trying to get it done in the off week when you have a little bit of time, but also having the weather cooperate with you. 
And I know last year especially we uh, we had plans on doing it, but obviously it was too cold. Got to make sure you take care of the players as far as the player safety side of it. This year, uh, you know, it was uh, it was good. You know, even though we practice in the mornings now, you know, it was uh, relatively warm outside at Riverside Park, and, and our guys had a lot of fun. You know, we let it, left it up to them to divide the teams in half, and you know, it was kind of neat to see different jerseys out there from youth hockey and junior hockey days. Uh, uh, going out there and uh, and our guys got something out of it. They made plays, they they worked extremely hard, but they had a little bit of fun out there. Yeah, always a lot of fun, when the weather permits, at least. Now that the bye is over, the road to the postseason really starts to heat up, starting with a home series against a highly ranked Denver team coming to town this weekend. I should ask, do you like having such a big rivalry series after a short break like this? Yeah, you know what, absolutely. I, I think when you're talking NCHC, it doesn't matter who you play, you're in for a, a tough weekend every time. and. You know, having Denver come in, that's, you know, considered one of our top rivals here coming into our rink here. Uh, you know, it, it makes it even extra special or extra focused on what we have to do here. And, uh, you know, having having a highly ranked opponent in Denver, uh, you know, forces us to make sure that we have to play the best game, uh, our best game, or bring our best foot forward here. So, uh, you know, that starts in practice. And that started today on, uh, when we got going, and it's going to go through the whole week of practice. You did take five of six points at DU back in November, which feels like a long time ago now. How has your team evolved since that series in Magnus Arena? Yeah, you know, we've grown as a team together. You know, uh, you know we've had a lot of success on the ice, uh, you know, and, and, and in saying that, you know, we've won games all different types of ways. And, you know, and then we, in the second half of the season, you know, we ran into a tough Omaha team that took one from us on a Friday night. We went into uh, Duluth and we split in Duluth. And so we, we've been into some, some pretty heavy matches uh, in the second half, which only made us better as a team here on how we have to grow. Uh, so again, like I said, we've had a relatively good year so far and we got to make sure that we keep building and growing as a team in which we have been. Denver had an 11 game unbeaten streak snapped two weeks ago before also going on by this past weekend. What have you seen from David Carl's team that's allowed them to be so successful this year? Well, they have a lot of skill in their group. You know, they have a lot of good skilled forwards and, you know, they have some very good skilled D-men. They've got good goaltending too. So they, you know, like us, they have some depth in their group, um, uh, you know, throughout their lineup. You know, it's one of those things that we had a mentality when we went in there that we played the right way and consistent and what we had to do in the job at hand. I thought they were very good uh, uh, matchups or battles that we had with them in Denver. And we got to make sure that we, you know, go back to those day, those things that, you know, that gave us success against them back in Denver. And again, we've grown in our game a little bit too on the offensive side of it throughout the year. And we got to continue to make sure that, you know, we work hard, especially away from the puck. But when we do have the puck, that we have an opportunity to try to create uh, against a very good team. Yeah, certainly. From an injury standpoint, you've had some guys miss time in recent weeks. How close to full strength will you be when you face DU on Friday nights? Yeah, we, I think we'll have just about everybody available except for probably, uh, you know, Gavin Hain. That'll be a question, I think, a game time decision. Uh, you know, he's he's progressing nicely here right now, but as far as the other guys that were banged up that didn't play, uh, uh, you know, uh, last weekend, uh, Matt Kirstead will be available this weekend. And, uh, you know, he's went through all the week of practice here so far, and he's been very good. That's good news there. Only four regular season series remain, with two at home and two on the road. With the fight for the Penrose starting to tighten up, how big does this home weekend become? Yeah, it, it, it's huge. You know, we call this, you know, there's eight games remaining in the regular season and then playoffs. Uh, you know, the, the, the season's winding down here. And again, you want to be playing your best hockey. And what we call this is the push. This is the final push right now. You know, we had our last break and now we uh, we plan on playing a long time here. But in saying that, we got to make sure that we control what we do here to do that. And uh, part of that is making sure that we execute and practice and we compete extremely hard here in the games and, uh, and, and try to translate some consistency in our game to, to win game after game. College hockey is a situation in the playoffs when you get to the NCAA tournament. Uh, that you know you win and you keep moving on. You don't, and then your season's over. So we have to make sure that we kind of play with a consistent brand of hockey through this final push. Well, we certainly are excited to see your team back in action, Brad. Thanks for the time, and best of luck against DU. Thanks a lot, Alex. Brad Berry. There is much more to come here on North Dakota Hockey Central, including a trip to the park for the team's only outdoor practice of the season. That's on the way. Welcome back. 
99% of the time, UND Hockey holds their practices on the main ice sheet of Ralph Engelstad Arena or down the hall on the REA's Olympic rink. But once a year during the team's second half bye week, the boys get to take it outside. Here's a look now at last week's outdoor practice at Riverside Park here in Grand Forks. Who doesn't love an outdoor rink, right? There was a little added excitement for this year's outdoor practice amongst the team as high winds and sub-zero temps had forced practice to be moved back inside each of the last two years thanks to Mother Nature for allowing it to happen this time around. We are back with more North Dakota Hockey Central after this, including a preview of UND's upcoming clash with one of its oldest rivals. Time now to check in on what's happening in college hockey around the nation, starting as always with this week's USCHO.com poll. Just because UND was off this past weekend does not mean the rest of the country was dormant, but despite Cornell and Minnesota State each going 2-0 on the weekend, it was not enough to displace Brad Berry's team from the top of the rankings. North Dakota has now been number one for six weeks this season. That's the most of any team in the NCAA in 2019-2020. UND also remains number one in the pairwise, and like the two teams below them, they have got a steady grip on a number one seed in the NCAA tournament thanks to their RPI and a gaudy win percentage rate of over 80%. 
Elsewhere, Duluth is now in contention for a number one seed in the NCAAs as they have moved past Denver into fourth, with the Pios right behind them in fifth. And then there's Western Michigan, whose steady climb into NCAA contention continued this past week with a non-conference sweep of RPI. The Broncos have now won seven of their last eight. That surge has launched Western into a tie with Denver for third place in the conference standings. Those two, Duluth and UND, are all in good shape to host an NCHC quarterfinal series, though St. Cloud State is still in contention after a four-point weekend in Colorado Springs. Keep in mind, though, the Huskies have played two more games than the teams ahead of them, and they will finish the regular season with home series against UND and Denver and a road trip to Duluth. In other words, if Brett Larson's team gets home ice, they will have earned it. For the second weekend in a row, there are only two conference series on tap in the NCHC as Duluth, St. Cloud, and Omaha are all on by. Colorado College gets an in-city home-and-home with Atlantic hockey rival Air Force that includes an outdoor game on Monday at the Falcons football stadium, while Western makes the short trip to Oxford to battle seventh place Miami. The big one to watch, though, is in Grand Forks, as top-ranked North Dakota hosts number 6 Denver, a team they've played 291 times since the program's first meeting back in 1950. UND took five of six points off the Pios back in November, the first series win for North Dakota in Magnus Arena since 2003. A similar return this weekend would see them officially clinch home ice for the NCHC quarterfinals. Game one between these two old rivals will air at 7.30 p.m. Friday on CBS Sports Network, while we will have you covered for game two Saturday at 7 on Midco SN. We hope you join us for all the action from the REA this weekend and again next week here on another edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. Until then, I'm Alex Seinert. On behalf of all of us at Midco SN, thanks for watching. I'll see you at the Ralph.